Welcome back, I'm so happy to see you again and today I have something different for you. I have a black canvas up here and we make these canvases with black gesso. We have a regular white canvas and I use a sponge, just the same sponge that you use to do the dishes and I cover it evenly with black gesso which is a water-based paint that dries very quickly and allows us to do fantastic things on canvas so you first let, let the black gesso to dry and then on top of that I have covered the entire surface with a laser crimson it's a very nice transparent uh, color so let's start off immediately and today I'm gonna start with a fan brush and I'm gonna take some cadmium yellow just a small amount and I will come up here in the canvas and just make some some strokes like this and what I want to do is make some light play through this just randomly and don't worry if you get some of these smiley faces in here because of the fan brush we will come back and blend it all together and you can use any transparent color for that you can use halo blue, halo green Indian yellow works very nice I want a kind of orangey effect today I'm gonna paint an open scene deep in the woods just wherever you want you can go like this too, you can have some some nice effect, some light playing through. Okay. And this is enough for now. Now I'm gonna take a clean two inch brush and soften all this, blend it all together. And as you can see, it mixes with the crimson that is underneath and turns a very nice orangey color. just here and there and you can have another layer if you want let's have another it would be nice to have multiple light sources I mean different values of color that's what I mean and it's very easy to do we're gonna practice on uh, making some strokes differently from the past and what I want to do today is a scene deep in the woods there you go, we blend it very easily very nice, and then very very gently I'm gonna remove the brush strokes and here we go so today let's take the filbert brush this is a number 6 filbert and I'm gonna take some dark sienna and just a touch of Van Dyke brown and I want to have some tree trunks back in the distance so let's decide where you want your trees to be just small figures of trees because they are currently far away from us you can decide the size the color it's always up to you just wherever you want them and we start with lighter brown color and as we move forward we're gonna darken it that's why I'm using the sienna right now and try not to make all of these straight we want some character in our forest today some are crooked, some are straight it depends on you seriously And I'm gonna have another one right here. And as the as the color uh, is getting reduced from the bristles, you can see that we're having uh, less paint. That means that these trees are far away from us. And I'm gonna have another one here. Okay. 
and I'll also take my liner brush with lots of paint thinner and go into the same color. Make sure you have a thin paint for that. And I'm going to paint some tree trunks, but very small. Decide where you want them to be, some limbs. And it's very important to have a thin paint, otherwise it won't stick. Wherever you want your limbs to be. And as I said, it's it's very nice to use different transparent colors for such paintings. You can use mixtures of transparent colors. You can use uh, purple. It's very nice. So right now, I don't want to highlight my trunks yet because this is these are supposed to be far away. So we're gonna move a bit closer now. Always using the filbert brush and I'm gonna go into some Van Dyke brown this time and we have a bit of dark sienna left into this and let's go up here, we're gonna make them a little bit thicker this time because they're supposed to be closer there you go and it's, this is also nice because your color mixes with the colors that are underneath the yellow, the crimson just a little bit here and you start with little pressure and as you go downwards you use more pressure because the tree trunk is thicker in the bottom that than in the top let's have another one in here there we go I want to have another one you know, you can have as many or as few as you want. It's always up to you. And I'm still using Van Dyke Brown for that. Alright. And we following the same procedure. Lots of paint thinner. Van Dyke Brown this time. Make sure your color for the branches matches the trunk. And it's very important to bring a sharp point to your line of brush when you're painting the limbs. And make sure you have a water consistency paint for that. A little bit more thin, a little bit more color. Just wherever you want them to be. That easily you can have very nice limbs and as you can see we have filled half the canvas already with trees with some nice lights it's very simple very quickly to do that's why I insist on painting using this technique and I love painting landscapes alright now that we are closer I want to put some highlights on my tree trunks and I'm gonna use my knife this is a number 10 knife, let me clean my thin paint here so I'm gonna take some titanium white a little bit more white a little bit of dark sienna and I'm gonna use some bright red to that, I want just a pinkish glow into my color and as you can see I do not over mix and I cut a little roll of paint and there are lots of variations of color as you can see we have pink, we have white, brown so let's come in here and just touch the canvas with this roll of paint very gently I just touch and I start from the bottom and working upward it's very easy to do, you just touch and this is how you make the bark on these trees it's very very easy and really anybody can do this I really hope you have gotten some inspiration watching these episodes 
We're doing lots of different things using Wings technique. There you go. And by the time we have not over mixed our paint, there are lots of different colors going on here. Let's go in here too. And just touch. It's that easy. And the only thing that touches the canvas is this small roll of paint. And the best thing for that is that you use a knife that has a straight blade, straight edge, and you're highlighting around these trunks. This is this is how it works. It's very easy. All right. Now I want to have some reflected light, some shadows. So I'm going to take some white. I'm going to take some of the midnight black, some of the Van Dyke brown, a little bit more black, a little bit more brown, and again I've not over mixed my color, cut off a little roll of paint, and I will go just behind this Highlight. It's easier to highlight from the right side by the time you are right handed. I hope this gives you good practice with a knife, with a liner brush. And you can use whatever brush you want for the tree trunks. You can also use a fan brush, you can use a knife. You can do a multitude of things with lots, with, with little equipment, that easily. And I just keep touching here, nothing to worry about. Just make some shadows. A little bit of shadow in here. All right. Now what I want to do is to have a little bit of grass in here, so I'm going to take... This is the brush I used to paint my canvas with Allusion Crimson and I will go into some cadmium yellow, some yellow ochre. And I just push, use a lot of paint for that, and you just push the paint into the brush. A little bit of Indian yellow. And make sure you have loaded enough paint by pushing upwards, as you can see, I push and there is a very nice line in here on my palette. So let's go up here. And you can also decide the lay of the land in here. So I will start from that spot and tap very, very gently. And by the time I decided this is an autumn scene, I don't want any green always depending on what color you're using you will also have the same color on your brush depends on what season it is and that's easy you have a nice grassy area to play gonna add the little touch of bright red to that and you are just touching and leaving some little dark spots in here so it doesn't seem very flat to your eyes. A little bit more color. Alright. And tell you that. I also want to have some bushes here and there, so let's go into some dark color, some dark sienna, some midnight black using the one inch brush. And let's decide where you want your bushes to be. Do not overmix 
your color on your brush just here and there, some nice bushes a little bit more here probably they come in front of that tree a little bit more here and we always use the rounded corner up we load the brush this way pulling down the paint and I'm gonna take some paint thinner for that and another clean one inch brush going some cadmium yellow, some yellow ochre and load the brush full of paint lots of paint is required for that and the paint thinner is here only to thin the paint down as you can see I have a rounded corner lots of paint and let's highlight this this will break up the straight line we had of the grass the tree trunks will not feel lonely now we have some bushes for company and this will also give you good practice let's go in here too and if your paint won't stick just add the least little touch of paint thinner to your brush with a bit more paint and I'm leaving dark areas in between so your painting doesn't look flat that easily we have given company to the tree, to the tree trunks now let's let's take the same color in the tunes brush just push and let's go in here and fix the bottom of those that easily you do not have to worry about mud mixing right now because we're using firm paints this is where this whole technique is based on firm oil paints and we thin them down when is necessary that easily okay now I want to have some more tree trunks but before I do that I want to show you a trick I want to bring a couple of these trunks closer to us so I will take the same Van Dyke brown color and I will just push down and can you see how this tree popped up in front of us? Probably this one too, but not very much. But easily you can change your mind. You can do whatever you want in this canvas. This is really your world. Now I'm gonna take the same color I used to paint the highlights and I will carry on in here. Just highlighting, just by touching very easily take some of the shadow color just touch and take my big brush again and clean the edges and by cleaning the edges of the trees they just don't float on the grass Let's make another layer. We're gonna have a lot of grass today anyway. Load the brush as necessary. And I'm not using a lot of pressure. Just tap gently. And when this dries, you will have a completely different feeling from the grass right now. The paint is wet and it has no texture yet but when this dries you will be amazed by the texture and by the effect right so let's have some more uh, tree trunks I will take Van Dyke brown and midnight black this time I want to darken my color just brush, brush mix it and let's come right here and we're gonna make this even larger 
because they're closer to us. If your paint won't stick, just add the least, least little amount of paint thinner, but very little because we're gonna come to highlight this with firm paint and if you use uh, thick paint on the thin paint, you're gonna mud mix for sure. We're doing the opposite in this technique. Maybe there's a big tree coming in front of the other and it pushes it back a little bit, we know it's there. And I'm only using Midnight Black and Van Dyke Brown. Let's have another one. Let's have another one right here. I just love making trees this way. It's probably one of my favorite things to do. And I really hope to enjoy what you're seeing that right now. And I'm gonna take the same color once again with paint thinner on my liner brush. And as you can see, I have a limited palette today. So let's come up here. And it's, it's very important to come above the trees that are behind this one. So we add depth to our painting this way. Just give some limbs to that. Wherever you want. There's a nice limb coming in here. Let's go to the other tree too. And you do not have to worry that much about the shape or the size of the trees, of the branches of your trees because in nature you're gonna see lots of different things right now. I'm gonna go in front of the bush so the bush is pushed back once again. Can you see that? Right now we have added more depth to our painting and it's very important to stand behind at some point and you will see uh, what you are already doing and probably want to fix some of your aspects. Right now I'm satisfied well with what I have already in my canvas. Another nice branch here. And you can have as many or as few as you want. Now I'm gonna make a nice link here. Alright, now I'm gonna take my palette knife once again with the same color, do not over mix it, it's very important not to over mix and it's also very important to pull the paint flat on your palette so when you get the roll of paint it will look like this because if you're gonna make a roll of paint from a big bunch of color you're not gonna have this nice even distribution of paint on the edge of your knife so let's highlight it and now the highlights are going to be more distinct because we're closer to us right now some more highlight just touch very very gently some highlight in this one and I really love these black canvases because color shows much better than in the white canvases I mean that as you can see the highlights already are much much more distinct in the eye you don't have to worry about putting the dark color first that much because you already have dark color with the black gesso and in order to make this kind of highlight with a palette knife it's very very important to have a firm, firm paint I will not stop saying this because this is what it's all about and I'm using a, a mixture of Winton paints 
and Bob Ross Baines. These are the brands of the colors I'm using. And you can use some other two. There is uh, the Gambling series, the Gambling brand. But for me, the best one is the Winton because it's also cheaper and it's easier to find than the others. And it doesn't matter what brand you're using as long as your paint is firm enough. Now I'm gonna take my uh, shadow color and add a little bit more black to that, a little bit more brown because we are closer and we want more distinct shadows. Our roll of paint here and just doing the same thing and as you can see it's much easier for me to do because I'm right handed and never use your finger on the blade I might did it earlier because I couldn't sneak in this spot but it's very important to hold the knife properly and all the tools so you can have the desired effects now I'm just touching here very very gently a little bit more shadow to this tree that easily and if you want you can come back and put, and put some more branches to your trees above the highlights but make sure you have a very thin paint otherwise they won't look right we're gonna mix with what's underneath and you won't be happy with the outcome now in order to bring all this together because we're closer now to us I'm gonna take the same uh, black Take some black and brown, do not over mix. Get a little roll of paint and come here and bring this all together. I want some more detail in these ones. You bring it all together. That easily. So now I think we should add some more bushes to play with these trees, we don't want them alone. So first of all I'm gonna I'm gonna take some yellows, tap the brush nicely into your paint, get a multitude of colors on, and let's clean the bottom of your tree gently gently tap and you can also use the one inch brush for that but I find I find that the two inch brush is better because it's bigger and I also want to keep practicing with this brush I just love this brush I'm keeping my one brushes for bushes and shadows, clouds. You can use your whatever you want, seriously. Alright, so let's paint some bigger bushes here. I'm gonna take some black and some Van Dyke brown. Just brush mix. And I will come up here put some bushes in a little bit more here okay I'm gonna take the least little amount of paint in there 
go into my yellows, Indian yellow, Canyon yellow, yellow ochre, but make sure you have a lot of paint. And let's go up here and just touch in order to highlight. And as I say, you can step back and see what you have. Already we have achieved lots of depth, lots of different things going on in the canvas. And in here I just push gently. Because if I use more strength to this one, then go to mud mix. We want a very gentle touch. A little bit in here, a very nice bush leaves here. And you decide the shape and the color. It's always, always up to you. If your paint won't stick, just add a little bit of paint thinner. And it's very important not to let the brush slide, we just push gently. Okay, I'll take the same color in the twins brush, push nicely, and I'm gonna come up here and just fix these ones. And this is how, it, how easy it is. You decide the lay of the land. And I've also snipped in here. I can come back and fix it if I don't want. I can scrape this all off if I'm not satisfied. You can do anything you want on this canvas. This is your world. Nobody has to tell you otherwise. You are the boss. And just fill this in nicely. Just gently tapping. This is a very nice way of practicing your strokes. A little bit more color. And I want to add the least little touch of dark sienna to my color here. Make it a little bit more to the sienna side, to the brown side. It will break it up a little bit. A little bit of bright red too. There you go. that easily. And using the twins brush just takes only a matter of minutes. Alright. And you can always come back and fix whatever you don't like. Bring all this together. So let's say that I, we want another layer of trees, so we come even further closer. I'm gonna take some midnight black, this is straight midnight black for me. And let's be brave now. Let's come right here. And it's okay to ruin the bush that is in the background in here. You won't get angry. This adds depth to a painting. And I'm gonna come right here. This is straight midnight black. And just make your trunks a bit thicker. 
And can you see the different layers we have right here? We have trees, bushes, grass, lots of nice trees. And it only takes a matter of minutes. That's why we paint wet on wet. And we follow the same procedure. This gives you lots, lots of practice. I will come in here. And I've not put it my branches yet. I want to be brave and have some of my branches go above my highlights. As I told you earlier, you can do that too. So I want to show it to you. This is kind of repetitive, but this is how we build depth. This is how we practice. You can also have a cabin, you can have a path, just, ever, just whatever you want in your world. I want to have some nice trees and bushes. And as I told earlier, I want to share with you my passion for this style of painting, show you different things. Whatever I do is live on camera and especially my language mistakes <laughs> you know these are for bloopers seriously but English is not my mother language so I think you can forgive me I really hope you can understand what I say and how I describe things I'm gonna make some more color this is white, this is dark sienna bright red I run out of color and do not over mix can you see the different values we have in here maybe a little bit more sienna and I'll come in here again and just touch And I'm gonna use I'm gonna use some of this color and some black, some Van Dyke brown. And can you see the marbled color we have? This is what we are looking for. Just touch to have some nice shadows. This is a very nice autumn woodland, as I call it. I've painted it in the past, but I always like changing some things from past pictures of mine. And right now I'm having no reference painting. This just flows out of my heart, and this is what I want to share with you so nice to know that people are watching the videos and they are enjoying themselves this is what it's all about sharing one's passion I have a general idea in my mind and I just let it go I'm using the technique and if you are painting along you do not have to do exactly the same thing you can change the colors as I told you. D use different size of canvases, different brands of my equipment, my colors. I just want you, I just want to show you how to do it. And here I'm bringing all this together for dark color. This is straight midnight black for me. And can you see, in here I have four tree trunks in the same area, but by the time I'm using the right sizes and colors, 
this isn't looking like a mess. We have just added depth to our painting. Now I'm going to take the liner brush and go into some midnight black, a little bit more paint in it, and lots of paint. Twist your brush into the paint and get a nice pointy edge. And I will come in here if you want to take, add more paint in there. And I'm just adding some branches once again. And I'm going above the other tree, pushing it back. Let me break. Let's have a stick that comes right above the tree trunk. Can you see what we have achieved in here? We have the thin paint, and we can do that right here. A nice big branch. And another one that comes right in front of the other. Always remember that a thin paint sticks to a thick paint. This is very important. Let's fix the foot of the trees, take the big brush, tap in some paint and I will come right above and fix the foot of it. And I think we should bring this to an end. I really hope you enjoyed today's session. These black canvases are very fun to paint on. And I really hope I managed to teach you depth, teach you different effects with the colors. Uh, we used very little equipment, uh, the filbert brush, the big brushes, it's that easily made. And I really hope you have given it a try too. So until next time, I'd like to wish you happy painting. Take care of yourselves and your beloved ones. And I'll see you soon. Have a good time.